contrary to popular belief. Africa is not poor. You don't go to a poor continent to make money. Africa is in fact the richest continent on the globe. Why haven't African leaders tried to make use of their resources? You might ask. They did. And every time they met the same fate. Death. Some under mysterious circumstances like Magufuli and MKO Abiola, who coincidentally both had a heart attack moments after plans to industrialize Tanzania and Nigeria's gold and oil reserves. U.S. Ambassador Susan Rice served MKO a cup of tea, which many people believe was the cause of his death. Other leaders have been killed directly by the orders of multinational corporations, like Ken Sarowiwa being hung by Shell. Or how about the first democratically elected leader of the Congo, Lumumba, being executed in a coup propped by Belgium and CIA, on the orders of Union Minery. Congo is in fact the richest country on the planet, yet has the number two poorest citizens. After they dismembered Lumumba's body, the CIA plant dictator Mobutu took control of Congo for 30 years. Similar cases can be found across the entire continent of Africa and the entire global south. Latin America and Africa are still under hostage from these corporations. They have killed everyone who's gotten in their way, including, but not limited to, Dag Hammarskjöld. The UN Secretary General, his plane was shot down in attempts to liberate the Congo from exploitation. JFK, being close friends with Dog and Lumumba, JFK was furious with Devlin and the CIA for their role in their demise, and planned to scatter the CIA into a thousand pieces. Weeks later, he was dead under mysterious circumstance. His death has a lot of similarity with a leader from Sweden, Olaf Palm. He wanted to continue Dag's legacy and help Africa and Latin America be free from the global elite. Sadly, he met the same fate. When looking at these deaths individually, it may look like coincidence. Yet when you have the full picture, it all makes sense. A full list of the activists, leaders, journalists and authors who have been killed can be found on the website theblackoutstrike.com. Join the strike and help Africa and the global south free themselves from the elite ruling class. Due respect, uh, one doesn't have to be brilliant to attempt a coup. Uh, I disagree with that. As somebody who has helped plan coup d'etat, and as somebody who has helped plan coup d'etat, not here, but you know, other places. I'm not going to get into the specifics, but uh, successful coups. Well, I wrote about Venezuela in uh, in the book, and uh, it it turned out not to be successful. I feel like you're this other stuff you're not telling me about. I think I'm sure there is. As somebody who has helped plan coup d'etat. You know that the U.S. Marines invaded Haiti in 1915 and went straight to the Haitian National Bank and removed all its gold reserves to Citibank in New York City? Do you know where the term Banana Republic comes from? No, it's not just a clothing brand. This is the term from the early 1900s that was given to the brutal and corrupt puppet regimes the U.S. installed in Central America so that companies like United Fruit, now Chiquita Banana, could super exploit and reap massive profits from people's blood, sweat, and tears. Between 1903 and 1925, in a period known as the Banana Wars, the U.S. invaded Honduras seven times. Oh, uh, but that was such a long time ago. The U.S. and Latin America have become compadres, right? Okay, fast forward from World War II to the present. In 1954, after a popular nationalist leader in Guatemala tried to redistribute some of the United Fruit Company's unused land, the CIA had him overthrown and replaced by a U.S. trained colonel who went on to torture and kill thousands. In 1961, the U.S. tried to overthrow the new government in Cuba in the Bay of Pigs invasion. In 1965, the U.S. invaded the Dominican Republic to crush a rebellion and install a new pro-U.S. president. The U.S. orchestrated a fascist coup in Chile in 1973 and backed counter-revolutionary and fascist regimes in Bolivia and Nicaragua. When people in Central America rose up in the 1980s against corrupt U.S.-backed tyrants, the U.S. funded, trained, and backed a reign of death squad terror in Honduras, Nicaragua, and El Salvador. In Guatemala, the U.S. backed Christian fascist butcher Rios Mont slaughtered over 75,000 indigenous Mayan people, burned 600 villages to the ground, and literally ripped the hearts out of children in front of their parents. The U.S. invaded Panama in 1989, dropping bombs on poor urban neighborhoods. And in case the Haitian people hadn't suffered enough under the boot of the U.S. for decades, 
the CIA helped to stage a bloody coup that removed the popular leader Jean Bertrand Aristide from power in 1991. Then they invaded Haiti in 1994, then had Aristide removed again in 2004, literally kidnapping him, him and putting him on a plane out of the country. In 2009, Obama and Hillary Clinton orchestrated a fascist coup in Honduras to replace a mildly reformist elected president. And this is just a partial list. All of this was done under Republicans and Democrats. All of it was done in the name of Demo